Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of what's new and what's through in my collection. So today I'm going through all of the items that I bought in the month of June as well as the items I'm getting rid of and towards the end of the video I'm going to be talking about the strict low buy that I'm going to be going on as a result of doing this series now for six months. So if you're interested in creeping into my collection, creeping into my spending, seeing what all I've gotten this month, what I've been using, what I've completely used up, keep on watching. Before we get too far into the video, if you haven't already, I would love it if you consider subscribing. I make new videos every single week and upload on Sundays. It is totally free to subscribe and helps me out a lot. All right, guys, so I'm gonna start with a couple things uh, that were afterpay items, meaning if you've watched the series consistently, you may have already seen these items, um, but I'm making payments on them. So the first item is from Muse Beauty. I made a payment of $8.41 and another one of $8.42 this month, and this guy is paid off. So here is the packaging on the outside. It is based on Starry Night, the painting by Van Gogh. Here's the inside. It is an amazing grungy yet summer friendly palette. I say for summer friendly because I really do feel like you can do a really nice light summer look with this column right here, the yellows and the light brown. And even like this shade is kind of more of a periwinkle. I swatched some of those in my last video, my eyeshadow ranking video. If you haven't seen yet, I will link that in the cards. I've played with this many times on my own, but I have it on camera yet. So if there's anything as I'm going through these items that you see that you would like more content on, more information, whether it's swatches, multiple looks, one palette, just to get ready with me, palette bingo, you name it, let me know down in the comments below. Next up, I continued making payments on an item I purchased last month. This is the Autumn Trio. This is my first purchase ever from Black Moon Cosmetics. And even though it's not autumn, they were having a sale on these and it is limited edition. So I really wanted to jump on it before it was gone. I bought the trio for this shade specifically. So this shade is called Cider and it is kind of, it's not really yellow, but it's kind of like a dirty grungy yellow. It's not really green, but it's also not like a vibrant yellow. It's cider it's like a spiced color it looks exactly like the color here in the bottom which i love this ombre thing it somewhat gives me lunar beauty vibes um and then i just went ahead and picked up the trio because these three together like i love a nice olivey green lip i do have one similar to this um but i don't think it's a liquid lipstick i think it's in bullet lipstick form which the uh liquid lipsticks are a bit more long wearing so i like those if i'm going out somewhere uh like long term for the day and then this one is like an autumn, well, yeah, the whole thing's called autumn, duh. Um, this one is more like, I don't know, it just reminds me of like the leaves changing. It's not quite orange, but it's like a rusty one. So this yellowy one is cider, the green one is hazel, and then the orangey one is harvest. So yeah, I continued paying on that trio. Um, I made two payments of $12.50, and then I have one more payment to make on that in July. Next up is a haul I got from BH. Uh, last month this was an in, so I didn't get to like show you, show you the items. I had just put up in the corner a little picture of what I ordered so I can actually show you these now. I have not used any of these guys in my eyeshadow ranking palette. These weren't ranked because this was part of my pile of shame, which for those of you who didn't watch it is basically palettes I bought but literally haven't used yet. So I need to use these. Um, and they were having a massive sale. They have sales often. so. Um, I blame Angelica and Nick Mist for some of these as well. So anyway, um, for BH, I made two payments of $11.48 and I'm gonna make one more payment of $11.47 in July. Um, I picked up three eyeshadow palettes, a blush palette, and a brush. So the first palette is Smitten in Switzerland. I've had my eye on this probably since it came out. I mean, it's been over a year for sure. And like these top two rows are not super interesting to me, although slope, I will say like, I like more cooler toned neutrals these days versus warmer toned. Um, but especially down here at the bottom, the greens and the oranges, I don't know, those just really, really grabbed my attention. Um, so I picked up that as one of them. I mean, these were like, what I say, I paid four payments of $11.48 to get three palettes and a blush palette and liner. Like, 
it wasn't terribly expensive. This was kind of a surprise, this next one that I bought this, because if you've been watching my channel, blue is not normally an eyeshadow color that I gravitate towards, but um, I got the Blueberry Muffin palette, and just the quality of the shimmers looked fantastic online. Um, and I feel I will use some blues like up here. If it's like a blue that kind of looks like a purpley blue or something like this, I'll use as liner or to deepen up the outer corner. That is really great. But even shades that are just straight up blue, like this one, Tempting, it was just the, the quality of the shimmers, how glitzy they looked, even on film, that drew me in. And I love this like holographic background down here. I love it when brands do that. I know it kind of blinds you in the camera, so sorry about that, but that looks beautiful. I didn't get the mimosa one from the uh, Weekend Vibes little trio they put out, but I did get the avocado toast because, hi, green eyeshadow and me are kind of a thing. So here's this one if you haven't seen it yet. Again, none of these are new releases. They were just on sale, but I don't mind getting things when they're like, past the hype or whatever, you know? I'm looking for the best deal. I don't necessarily have to have it now. I mean, if there's a little FOMO, I'm sure you guys can relate when things first come out and you're like, oh, I don't have it or whatever, but I feel like I feel that even sometimes when people get their PR early and it's like, well, I can't get it, so you're doing tutorials and things with things that I don't even have yet, and by the time I get the thing, I have to like go back and search for the tutorial for it. So. At the end of the day, the timeline doesn't matter to me because I feel like there's still enough people that own this palette that you might go back. I do this with older palettes and are like, okay, I have this, but it needs more new inspiration. I'm out of looks that I can come up with and then I go look to see what already exists on YouTube. So I feel like it's worth it in that sense. And I mean, not just for the YouTube value. Obviously guys, I wear makeup outside of YouTube. I make videos one day a week, you know, the other six days, it's for me to have fun. The blush palette I got was the Vanilla Cream Truffle Blush Palette. I mean, the outside is whatever packaging wise, but the fact that they made them look like little candies, you guys, come on. That's cute, right? That they look like little truffles. And it is scented too. That's a delightful surprise. It smells like vanilla since it's vanilla cream. So they have multiple shades of this on their site. If you want um, something deeper, if you have a different complexion than I do, this is just the one I thought would work best on my tone of skin. So I didn't need more blushes, but the aesthetic got me, you guys. And honestly, the price tag, it was, it was cheap and it was there and my wallet was there. You know how these things go. The last thing I got from uh, BH Cosmetics was a brush, and this is a bent liner brush. I have like a tiny little eyeliner brush that's just a straight brush from Morphe, but I decided to get this because I don't have anything in a shape like this, and I've seen people use them, and it seems like it could make like different angles of eyeliner easier if you're using something liquid or a lip liquid uh, lipstick as a liner. So it's bent at the top there. You see that? But intentionally so that you can like get in to that like inner inner little corner right here easier instead of something straight where having to like try to do one of these with your arm and everything. This is just bent for you so you don't have to angle your arm as far and you get to all of the crevices or as uh, one of the YouTubers uh, Seeking Alexandria likes to say all the crevasses. Shout out to her. She's a Michigan native, and since I am in Ohio, we're little next door neighbors. That's it for purchases that are like old purchases. You know, I'm just making payments on things. So next I'm gonna go ahead and show you the things I got in my Ipsy bag this month. Listen, Ipsy Semi did me dirty, okay? So I had my subscription paused, right? Like I have a lot of makeup. I just was like, let's put a pin in this for a few months. You can pause it for one month, two months, three months, whatever. So I had it paused for three months. But I came back early because I got an email that basically said, hey, if you come back, we'll add another free item in there. And I was like, great, sounds awesome. I'll do it for the free item, right? Who doesn't love a free item? So I do that, they charge me, and then I get an email that's like, oh, due to an error on our part, we basically ran out of free items or some, some BS like that because it's like, Really, your Ipsy, you didn't have anything you could put in there as the free extra item. 
really. So they didn't give me an extra item, as I'm about to show you this bag, you'll see. But what they did instead, as kind of a, like an oops are bad type thing, is they gave me points in my account so that you can like redeem points for free items. So I did redeem a free thing that's gonna come in July, which I'm like, did you do this just so I would then also get the July one? I don't know. Then also it took a long time to get the June one out. Like usually you get it before the end of June and I got it like the last day of June, I think. So I got another email that was like, oh, we're so sorry, shipping times have been so slow, blah, 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 whatever. So we're gonna credit you $6 to add-ons for the month of July. So I got points from their no free thing in June and then I got um, $6 credited to, you can do add-ons and pay for them. So I picked two $3 add-ons. So I believe in my July bag, I should be getting eight items instead of five, but this month I only have five. So long, long story short, that's where we're at. I used to do dedicated videos to just testing out the items in these bags, but I quit doing that because they were sending me so many non-makeup things that I couldn't test on camera, like a lot of skincare and stuff. Not that I couldn't do skincare on camera, but I feel like I mean, what am I gonna do with the toner? Be like, yep, it's a toner. You know what I mean? You don't see like lasting results until much over time. And then it's more of a review. Like it's just different. So I quit doing them. Um, if you are wondering, that's why. But I did get toner why I said here, Calming Green Turnover Toner from La Palette Beauty. Never heard of it, but um, I do have a lot of redness. So that was pretty exciting. And I go through toners pretty quickly. The other kind of like non-makeup thing I got that was like not just makeup, I mean skincare is kind of in the makeup category, was this fragrance from Juliet Has a Gun. I think it's pear scented and it's just a little like spritzer thing like this. I don't get fragrances very often in Ipsy, but I'm pretty excited for this. Okay, I'm gonna have to like test this for a while because sometimes they smell different out of the spritzer than like when you put them on, but I already put something on today, so I don't want it to mix and be weird, but this smells really kind of like grandma perfumey, <laughs> just smelling it from here. So I'll have to keep you posted on that if you're interested, let me know. If not, then I don't need to keep you posted. I also have, by the way, a TikTok on all this stuff. Like I do unboxes and stuff. If you wanna see what I'm getting a little bit early, um, you can follow me on TikTok. My handle for that and all my other socials will be in the description box below. If you're interested in following me any other places, try to be pretty active on Instagram stories. So it doesn't always happen, I'm not gonna lie. It depends on what life's thrown at me at that point in time. Um, I got from Benefit the Professional Super Setter Setting Spray. I think this is pretty new. So it's supposed to be a long lasting makeup setting spray that will blur your pores. Hmm, I have like really big pores right in here. You probably can't see this zoomed out, but they're craters. So looking forward to this indeed. Setting spray is another thing that I, I go through pretty quickly compared to other makeup products. Um, I got the Tarte Tardis Mascara. This is one of them that I surprisingly have not tried. I've tried their Lights Camera Lashes. I did not care for that one. I didn't really think it did anything for my lashes. Um, and then I've tried the Man Eater, I went through all of that. I ended up really liking that one. I just didn't repurchase because I have so many mascaras, but I would recommend that one. Very, very good, especially for the lower lashes, because I virtually have none, and that would make them pop. Loved it. Um, and then I have Big Ego, and I've tried it a few times. So I don't fully know what I feel about that one, but I've tried it probably like four or five times, and it was okay. I definitely liked it better than uh, Lights Camera Lashes. But this one just says Tardis Lash Paint which is weird to me that it says lash paint and not mascara. I don't know what that's about, but <laughs> if you tried this one, let me know in the comments below if you've tried the Tarte Tardis mascara, what you think of it. I'll have to give it a go. The last thing I got was this nude balm from Context. I think I got a lipstick from them before in Ipsy and actually genuinely really liked the formula and the color of it. So it's just like clear, lip balm, which is fine. Um, I don't usually wear lip balm a lot during the day, but I do put on lip balm almost every night before bed. Um, I 
am not like a mouth breather per se, but I don't know why. Sometimes my lips just get really dry at night, so I like to put a little bit of a chapstick or lip balm on before I go to sleep every night. All in all with shipping, that bag was $12.87, by the way. All right, next up, I actually bought some jewelry, and I don't know how you guys feel about, you have to let me know, like sometimes I slip in like, oh, I bought some jewelry or candles or things like that that aren't necessarily makeup, but I feel like they're in the beauty realm, so I include them. I don't know if you guys like that or not. You'll have to let me know. Um, but I got um, a few pieces of jewelry. I haven't gotten jewelry in quite some time. I think a couple months ago I got some, but beyond that, it's been probably over a year. I don't shop for jewelry often. Um, I lost a lot of my faux piercing jewelry, I guess just like in the move. So I got a couple of fake ear like cuff rings here's one of them that i'm wearing right now it's kind of crisscrossed and i really like these for days like today when i just have my hair like thrown up and so it's just like a cute little ear cuff that you can add on i got this one that's crisscross and then i also got this other one that is just like straight across i'll show you what i mean like on this one see the two bands let me get my fingers out of the way they're just like straight up and down whereas this one the two pieces of metal crisscross so i tried wearing them both at the same time but i didn't like how it looked it looked like just too much um but they came together in one set and i got the other ones on i got all of these actually just on etsy and the other jewelry i got were a matching pair of like full ear cuffs like it goes on your whole ear and it's pointed like it looks like an elf ear so that might be just like a little cosplay moment i'm not sure yet and then i also got a faux septum ring i used to have one that i loved and like i said i just can't find it so i repurchased a few of those things since they were all on etsy which is kind of like small business homemade like things like that not a chain it was a little more expensive so getting the two ear cuffs like the small ones, the two big like elf ones were the most expensive because they're really ornate. Um, and then the septum, that was $82.41. So kind of pricey, like that was a big bulk of what I got this month was that jewelry order. Next, I'm gonna tell you about a couple things I ordered that aren't in yet and then I'll finish with some stuff I got at TJ Maxx because I blacked out in TJ Maxx. It, I just couldn't help it. I hadn't been in there a long while and I just was like, oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? I'm sure you can relate. But the stuff I ordered that hasn't come in yet is, of course, the collaboration between Lethal Cosmetics and Teresa is Dead, Lethal is Dead collection. I got the full collection, the eyeshadow palette, and the three liners. I've been really wanting to try their liners, so now is my chance. I did after pay on that, so I only paid $21.96 this month for that, and then I'll have three more payments to go. Um, but that's going to be a bit until it gets here, but I did order it and pay that down payment. And then I also bought three liquid lipsticks from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. I've really been thinking about it since last week when I posted my video and seeing like comments and like who has like the number of likes comments get and things like that. And I did buy like obviously just buy these liquid lipsticks I had as of last video too, but just seeing how people feel feel and thinking more like I understand the sentiment that I, I've kind of been thinking that this is probably my last order with that brand so I, I don't know for sure but I'm really thinking that way so if you never hear me mention them again after uh, my payments are done on these liquid lipsticks then I guess you know that's I decided that <laughs> but I'm really thinking this might be my last order I placed with that business um, but I did pay $11.26 for those and there's going to be two more payments in July and one in August. All right, we had to get out the crate for the rest of the TJ Maxx haul because it's it's a hefty TJ Maxx haul. Um, I spent $87.91 at TJ Maxx, but I actually got a lot of stuff for you guys. I'll show you. And it's weirdly a lot of complexion stuff, which you would think like normally me it's eyeshadow, but no. There was only one eyeshadow palette I could not resist getting and I I haven't used it yet. So I feel like I'm gonna regret that I got this, but I'm not sure. But I got the Pure 2.0 Festival palette. And I feel like I just got this because I really love my collab with Raw Beauty Christia that I have with them, but I'm looking at it and like, I just don't know if it's gonna be the same quality. I'm not sure if it will be or not, but um, this Utopia shade looked super interesting to me. That drew me in a lot to this. Um, and then 
this kind of coral shade and this pinky one I thought looked really good for summer. A lot of it's just neutrals um, with pops of color, but it was only, how much was this Justice palette? $7.99. So I just got drawn in. I don't know. I haven't used it yet. It's in my pile of shame. Okay. I don't want to hear the judgment, but that was the only eyeshadow product that I got from TJ Maxx. I stocked up on toner. Mostly, I usually either use Humphreys or Thayer's toner. And I got this one because my Humphreys is almost gone. Not knowing I would get that little $2 one in Ipsy, but that's okay. I'll use it anyway. Um, I got a couple primers. I got this Moisture Lock Primer with Hyaluronic Acid from e.l.f. That looked good. Anything hyaluronic acid, you know, it's just like the buzzword that grabs your attention. So I got that as a primer. I got this Sephora Clear and Cover. Um, it's an acne treatment cream concealer that helps clear acne blemishes and prevent new ones. Interesting, I got it in the shade Two Linen. So I'm really curious about that one. I've never actually used anything that was Sephora brand, frankly, so hmm. Um, and then I got the Stila Hide and Chic Fluid Foundation. Um, I got mine in shade Fair 2. I mostly got this one. I was drawn in by the fact that it said it was light to medium, buildable coverage, natural satin finish. So I felt like that seemed like it would be good every day. I got the Lorac Porefection Mattifying Face Primer. Haven't heard anything really about this, but the fact that it's mattifying, oil-free, um, and it has salicylic acid, which helps with acne and is supposed to smooth and help with pores. I'm like, hi, you might as well literally have written primer for Caitlyn's problematic skin, right? Based on the claims, we'll see how it actually works. And then, man, I was really on a foundation kick. Normally I don't find shades that really are gonna work out for me in TJ Maxx that much, but they just had a lot that I thought would work for me. And since I did use up I used up like a whole bottle of Bleed Beauty. I'm working on another one right now that is like halfway. Um, I was like, okay, I'll get a few more because I don't normally buy foundation. So I kind of stocked up and got a few. So I got the Stila foundation. This one is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid SPF 15 Broad Spectrum. Um, it doesn't even say foundation on it, does it? it just says 24 hour wear, buildable full matte coverage, oil shine, shine control. So I don't know. I don't know what this is gonna be. What is this? Are you a foundation? I feel like it doesn't actually say the word foundation, but yeah, I got it in NC10. And then I got the Beauty Blender Bounce Liquid Whip Long Wear Foundation. This little one that you like pump it flat and it's got like the little carved out thing for your beauty blender to go in let me just see if i can show you here and i got mine in the shade blend 1.00 c which i think c is probably for cool i usually get neutral undertones but i thought this one would work see it's got like the shape in here you see like the indentation so you like pump it when it's flat and then it comes out here and sits and you can like dab your beauty blender in there or any sponge really. It just looks really interesting. I remember it coming out and thinking it looked interesting then, but did not want to pay what it costs. That's what I usually do with TJ Maxx with most of these guys. Like, I don't normally buy from Mac and Stila and Lorac and those high-end brands. It just costs too much, but I want to try them, and so TJ Maxx is kind of the compromise. Then I got an item from Becca, which I was like, She's going out of business, you guys. She's not gonna be here for long. So I saw this Sunset, oh sorry, Sunsetter face palette. Packaging drew me in, but it looked pretty good. Like this especially too, I was like, ooh, it just looks luxe. I haven't heard anybody talk about this, but I wanted to get it because they're not gonna be available for longer. Now these are all shimmery. So this is a shimmery bronzer. I'm not really into shimmery bronzers that much. If I am, I'll use it here on the cheek. I don't like shimmery bronzers on my head or my nose, but I'll use it on the cheek. So I'll either do this on the cheek or use it as eyeshadow. Um, and then it's got blush here. And I think this is, I think technically these two smaller ones both said they're highlighters, but I might be able to use that either as blush or a blush topper. And it's kind of like a champagne-y 
uh, highlighter there. Yeah, it's got a really nice huge mirror in it too. You can see all my, my light situation there. Picked that one up just because it was Becca and they're going out of business and you know, it's cheaper than what I would normally have to pay for it. And I don't really have a lot of like face palettes. So, like I said, that was pricey at TJ Maxx, but I honestly got a lot of stuff. Let me know if you've tried any of that stuff because I know it's been out for a while, whether it's like the palettes or the TJ Maxx stuff, whatever. I'm really curious to hear your opinions or give tips on things like, this works better with a brush. This works better with a sponge. I would love to hear all of your tips and information. and It just helps to share what we know with each other because there's so much to try, you can't try it all. So in total for this month, I spent $281.14. Yeah, that's better than the past two months, but I want to do even better, which is why I'm kind of reevaluating going forward. So, and you guys can let me know too. I don't know if I want to do this every month anymore. It doesn't seem like it's as popular, the series, as some of my other videos, but you guys let me know if I should do this every month or maybe I can consolidate and just do it like every other month, especially because I am going to be going on a low buy and budgeting like limiting how much I'm getting so it might be less stuff and I might be able to fit two months worth into one video um, but I am going to like strictly say that I cannot spend more than $200 a month for the rest of the year. I know that might sound like a lot of money to some people anyway but um, I've only had two months this year that I've been tracking that I've been under $200 so for me that's going to be cutting back. At the beginning of the year, I said I wanted to cut back, but I had never really tracked my spending in this way to know exactly how much I spent on makeup, jewelry, skin hair, that kind of stuff. So doing this for six months has really shown me and it helps me to come up with a number of what's feasible, like it's not a no buy, but what is like low for me. And maybe after a bit, I can even reduce that even more. I don't know, but I am gonna say I'm only doing 200 a month for the rest of the year, which before this video, I calculated like, what did I already spend for July um, since I did Afterpay and stuff like that. And I've already used like half of my budget for next month because of Afterpay, so. It is what it is. I have plenty of makeup, you guys. I have plenty of stuff. I love the stuff I have. I just need to use what I have and not be like so attracted to everything. Um, I didn't want to totally say no buy because sometimes there are like collabs or limited edition things that I didn't want to like tell myself I couldn't have those things if they came out and I wanted to support someone or have a specific limited edition thing. Like can you imagine if I was like mm, limited edition Club, Club Nebula Kaleidos, I can't get it because of my low buy. No. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like there's exceptions, but that's going to be the deal from here on out um, with my what's new and what's through in my collection. Now I'm going to transition to the stuff that I used up this month. It was not much at all. Several things I used up were, like didn't cost me any money. Like I used up a couple like perfume samples. Um, this wood one was okay. I don't know. It would D squared too. It was okay. They were like free samples I got in the mail. Next one I loved like looked it up and screenshotted it so that someday when I've used more of my fragrances up and I need to restock, I will get this again. I don't even care that it says that it's like a men's perfume, cologne, whatever you want to call it, but this is the Bulgari. I have no idea how you say that, guys. I'm going to try to show you up close here the name of it right there. Bulgari. I have no idea, um, but it is the Man Wood Neroli. Eau de Parfum. I don't think that's how you say that. Um, but I used that up too and I love that one so much. I will absolutely repurchase that one day. It's not ridiculously expensive for a scent. I think it was somewhere in like the 60 range for the full size, which is not bad, you know. You could get a really big one for over 100, but I'd probably get like the mid-sized one for me personally, but it's so good. It's like a woodsy smell. I don't know anything about describing scents, so I can't really tell you other than that's just like a like spicy, warm tone, woodsy smell is what I would describe it as. I used up three of these little packages from Caudalie. They are a reverse to trial lift, I think is how you say it. Skincare. Um, I got three of these sent to me from Top Circle just to sample and write reviews on. It felt very thick and moisturizing, but it didn't do much for my fine lines the way it said it would, so I wouldn't spend money on it, but I did use them. And then I used this uh, 24 Gold and Caviar face mask. This was a gift from 
um, I believe from Jenny, which is my soon to be sister-in-law. So this was really nice, but it was gifted. So none of that stuff counted as like me using up, like as far as money's concerned, I didn't put money into any of those. They were either sent to me from a company or in the mail, free samples or like a gift from someone. Then the stuff I actually paid for, okay. Just a Burt's Bees detoxifying charcoal sheet mask paid $1.49 in clearance. Would not recommend this, it kind of started burning, not gonna lie. And it only, you only leave it on for two minutes. And in two minutes, it started burning. That's not good, that's not right, so no. <laughs> Up the Lash Food Conditioning Collagen Lash Primer. I was wearing this at night on my lashes because, I mean, it looks like a primer. It's white, you can probably see like the dried remnants of what's left. But this actually did feel like it made my lashes look like longer, healthier, all of that stuff. But I looked it up and this is expensive. Um, I have a ColorGirl lash serum thing that I'm using right now that I don't think does anything, but I refuse to waste product. So I'm going to use that up completely and then I might revisit buying this one. But if you have crummy lashes and you're looking for something to improve them, this Lash Food Conditioning Collagen Lash Primer, I actually did see some results on it. And finally, something I bought in January, something I, I think this is the first item that I bought in this series that is like exiting my collection in this series. This is the uh, Spot Clarifying Patch Kit from Zitsticka. I bought this in January when it was on sale in the, I think the 21 Days of Beauty at Ulta. Um, yeah, these, I, I wasn't super impressed. I really thought I would be. Sometimes they get really big painful cystic acne. Um, and this is for the early stage zit. And I did try to like, as soon as I felt them like under the skin, I would put this on there. And these you even wear overnight. I liked the idea of like the micro needles that would like actually kind of like puncture the skin, which it wasn't painful at all. And I'm sure it did help some. It just didn't really do as much as I thought. And these normally cost $16 for a pack of four. I got them on sale, so I paid $8. But that's still $2 a patch and I didn't see $2 a patch worth of results. So there's plenty of brands that do these stickers. I've tried the Truly ones too. I didn't think, I thought the Truly ones did less than these even, honestly. So I've got a few brands favorited on Ulta that maybe when I've saved up some points or they're having a sale or something, I may try some other brands just to be on my zit sticker journey to find one that actually helps my acne. But this was $8 and I fully used all of the patches up. So this month I only used up $10.49 worth of stuff since a lot of it was sent to me or gifted to me, but it is what it is and we're going on the slow buy, so hopefully that makes things a bit better going forward. I say better for me, you know, you can do what you want. Anybody can spend as much as they want on this stuff. I just have so much now that it's becoming an issue of storage. Like I don't have places for it and that like, I don't want so much that I can't even put it away because that's where I'm at right now. So I'm trying to do better and bring less stuff in and get more stuff out. And with that, guys, I'm going to head off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, make sure you give it a thumbs up before you go. Helps it with the YouTube algorithm. And I hope you have a great rest of the day or evening, wherever you are. And I hope to see you back for the next one. Bye!